Welcome back. You're watching Stockwatch this week. And joining me to unpack your stock-related questions this afternoon is Wayne McCurry from FMB Wealth and Investments. Uh, send us your questions uh, via email to stockwatch at bdtv.co.za or via SMS on 41392 or on X at Business Day using the hashtag Stockwatch. Thank you so much for your time, When I think the, really the only question that people have right now is who is going to take South Africa? <laughs> and of course, we have seen volatility yes. in the markets, uh, particularly in the last two days. Seems that the markets are coming back a little bit today, but not too much compared to the sharp losses that we saw yesterday. Uh, what are you making? And do you think that this is just what the markets do and that we're going to have to stomach some volatility for at least the next week look i mean just i suppose all as per normal there's more than one reason why markets do anything mm. um last night and the night before the u.s markets especially the nasdaq was quite weak so that certainly didn't help but i would think by far the biggest reason why the rand's weak and why the markets were weak yesterday was the anc losing by what appears to be quite a large margin and overall majority in the Houses of Parliament. And obviously then good chance of losing Gauteng. Definitively they've lost KZN. So who are they going to team up with? Because uh, ANC, EFF, MK coalition would be catastrophic for South Africa. And let's just hope that the politicians put South Africa first and not themselves first and as, as to which partners they choose to get a coalition government going with. Mm. But it could be the dawn of a new age. I mean, if they partner with the DA, then it actually would be a dawn of a new age in South Africa, and that will be very positive, and our market will go up and the rand will strengthen. But, of course, we're dealing with politicians here, yeah? And they don't always put the country first, and they don't always do what's right first. They look after themselves normally in the first instance, but there's so much at stake here that hopefully they do, all the parties do make the right decision because this is truly critical for South Africa. Yeah, indeed. Um, Wayne, and just talking obviously about the markets, the RAND, which is also linked uh, to our banks as well, we did see a sharp sell-off, uh, particularly in the banks yesterday. Um, and, you know, NetBank comes out with a voluntary uh, trading update uh, today. Uh, what are you making of, you know, those results that came out of NetBank for the first four months of its uh, financial year? But also just is, you know, is the sharp sell-off that we've seen an opportunity to get into a quality sector in South Africa? Well, look, the banking shares have been cheap for a very long time. Uh, they did have quite a nice rally. I mean, obviously, we get a little bit of weakness now, mm. but they were very cheap about a month, just over a month ago. And they did all have a nice rally. Um, but it's just dependent on what your view is. If you think that we will be governed by a good government or a better government than what we have had, then buy the banks like crazy because they really are cheap. But if we get an EFFMK in government in senior positions, mm -hmm. banks are not nearly cheap enough yet. And they will weaken some more and the RAND will weaken some more. And they aren't in there that you think, uh, you know, based on what they look like operationally, that maybe could uh, weather that storm if we do get to the worst case scenario as per the markets. Well, look, in the shorter term, even if the worst case scenario does happen, it takes a very, very long time for things to actually impact company earnings. Mm. It'll impact emotions, it'll impact the ratings quite, quite quickly. But it does take a bit of time before that actually works through into the interest rates and the, you know, the actual income statement. So it won't be an immediate effect on the profitability, but it will be an immediate effect on the valuation. Yeah. Are all banks the same here or not? Uh, considering also the uh, numbers that NetBank and uh, APSA are churning out that are you know, below what Standard Bank and mm -hmm. First Rand have well, been coming out with. There, there, there seems to be two groupings, maybe even, let's call it three groupings of banks. Yeah. The banks that are doing quite well, that's obviously Capitec, First Rand and Standard Banks. Mm -hmm. uh, NetBank's in the second grouping, they're doing okay. 
And then APSA, unfortunately, is in the third grouping. They are doing the worst of the whole lot. And, but obviously, then, the rating of the share or the valuation of the share, APSA is the worst and Capitec is the highest. Yeah. So the market's been quite accurate in, I suppose, giving a relative rating for the bank shares in comparison to other bank shares. Mm, I hear that. I hear that. Uh, when there is a question here uh, going on to... Um, a diversified uh, player here, uh, commodities, construction, Afrimat. Um, can mm. you comment on what is driving up the Afrimat price? I actually haven't looked at Afrimat uh, since they released their results. When was it? Uh, two weeks ago. And they actually mm. were very good. Um, yeah. Is that what still could be driving up the share price? It's quite possible the results were good. I mean, this is one of the last survivors in this field. Mm. But yes, the results were good. And I think that is what's pushing up uh, the share price. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what the share price, same as you, has done in the last week or so. But mm. the results were good. It seems to be good. It seems to be good that it has kept that momentum. Um, yes, very yeah. much so. Would this still be a good... I mean, just also just looking at what it has done, do you think that... Um, it's still maybe affordable enough for you to go, even though we have seen this uh, I rally. It, mm -hmm. I think it is still cheap enough, but remember, this is a very volatile sector. So if you do decide and you've looked at the company and you've done your homework and you actually want to go in and buy some, mm -hmm. don't put all of your money into it. Eh? This is a risky sector. Yeah, of course. And also still driven uh, by uh, commodity prices as well, even though it is uh, more diversified. All right. Well, uh, talking about uh, diversified uh, players, Anglo uh, was still a big mm. one this week, Anglo and BHP. Uh, what did you make of, you know, what transpired on the 29th with BHP saying, you know what, it's actually fine. Let's leave it for now. Look, BHP, I think, is doing the right thing. They've obviously worked out the maximum they wanted to pay. They made that offer. Anglos rejected it, and then they said, we're not going to overpay, we're going to step back. And I think that's a very good sign for BHP. It's a sign of maturity. Mm -hmm. They didn't just want Anglos at any cost. Yeah. But of course, we're going to look at the implications of this whole bid. I mean, Anglo-American, I know they say they were uh, conducting a strategic review when the BHP bid came through, but clearly they've had to accelerate that program and maybe they've had to say a few things, maybe prematurely. Maybe they've had to do a few things that they wouldn't automatically have done. But understand, they might backtrack a little bit on what they said they're going to do because of BHP, but they're going to do the big things. They're going to unbundle Amplats. They're going to unbundle De Beers. They're going to put nickel on care on maintenance. They're going to stop the big money outflows from their fertilizer business overseas, and they're going to sell the non-quality iron ore. I think it's all South American. So they're going to keep Kumba, and they're keeping copper, and they're keeping a few other things. This is a dramatically different company to what we know. Of course, we will have Am Amplats is obviously listed, mm. but the free float in Amplats will go to 100%. I mean, I think Anglos owns 80% of Amplat, even more. I can't mm. quite remember the number. But so there's a very low free float for Amplats. Uh, De Beers is coming back to the market. I mean, I can remember when De Beers was listed in the 90s before it was bought out by the family Anglo-American and the Botswana government. Mm. You know, now it's coming back onto the market. Obviously, only Anglos share uh, in the, in the interim, the Oppenheimer family have sold their shares to Anglos and to the Botswana government. So those are the only two shareholders. I don't think the Botswana government's going to unbundle their yeah. De Beers shares. But uh, so De Beers will be a new listing on the market. And we've got to see how our players react to this. I mean, it's been a lot of speculation that everyone who gets Amplat shares now is just going to sell it because they don't want it. I, I, I don't. I don't follow that argument. Amplats okay. is such a big part of Anglos that if you owned Anglos, you obviously were comfortable owning Amplats. So I don't think mm. everyone will sell. But of course, you'll have to see how De Beers is, how the market reacts to De Beers because the platinum business is going through a cycle. You know, there's, I don't think there's anything structurally wrong with platinum, but De Beers, there could be something structurally wrong 
with the diamond market. Yeah. Because these synthetic diamonds now, you know, they're not they're not it's not plastic, eh? These are genuine diamonds. They're just made in the in the laboratory. Yeah. You now you cannot tell the difference between these diamonds and a natural diamond. And they're cheaper. You know, so this could it'll boost the overall demand for diamonds because obviously people will buy more if it's cheaper, but it could be a quite a dramatic effect on the pricing of the natural diamonds. And certainly the last couple of sales numbers that have come through from De Beers have been mm. quite quite weak. They've been quite disappointing. Yeah. It's quite interesting, Wayne, because, I mean, it's what I was thinking as well when uh, Anglo uh, came out with the statement of uh, their restructuring, uh, because we weren't all expecting it at that time. And so it's quite interesting yes. that you also say what I've been thinking, that they might have said some things prematurely. And obviously them saying that this is also going to be quick. It's going to it's not going to be this. Uh, it's going to take less than 18 months, less, uh, you know, than the BHP deal, uh, yeah. less time than the BHP deal deal was going to take up you know you, you mentioned amplats and that your argument um is it goes against what a lot of people have been saying that everybody's just going to be selling their amplats shares a lot of people have yeah. been wondering if i hold it um if you're already in the stock should i hold and maybe stomach the volatility that i could see it's a cycle yeah yeah you know, obviously, the introduction of electric vehicles over the longer term is potentially or is a threat to platinum and palladium and rhodium because there's going to be no autocats. Mm. But, you know, there's a couple of things here. This is going to take a long time. There are roughly 1.3 billion internal combustion engines in the world, overwhelming majority motor vehicles. There's about 100 million motor vehicles sold per year new. And of that 100 million, about 20 million is battery electric at the moment. Mm. So even if that goes to 100%, and there's every sign now that people are going more for hybrids than battery electric, but even if it goes to 100%, it will still take 13 years before all the vehicles on the road are battery. So in other words, for the medium term, for the foreseeable future, there's still big demand for platinum and palladium in autocats, you know, and there's and there's a very good chance that the future of electric is not battery electric; it might be fuel cell electric, mm -hmm. you know, the, and that's very good for the PGNs. I mean, the future might not be electric at all. The future might be a hydrogen engine, which is also extremely good for for platinums. The future might be fuel cells instead of batteries. That's very good for platinum. So we still in a bit of a, a state of flux as to what is the new green future going to look like and will that be extremely good for platinum okay for platinum or bad for platinum we don't know the answer yet and mm. and whatever the answer is it's actually quite a long way into the future so i think this is very similar to 2012 through to 2015 it's just a down cycle same as mm. the down cycle in iron ore you know i don't think there's a structural change imminent in the platinum market so hopefully the shareholders who get these shares when they're unbundled won't just be selling them at any cost because amplat gets up slightly today but you know it's 640 650 i mean this share is down from 2500 yeah yeah um, Wayne, uh, one stock that I'm surprised by because yesterday we saw quite a number of uh, retailers under pressure uh, tfg woolworths uh true words granted uh those are the clothing ones but i was quite surprised that uh, pick and pay mm. didn't actually go down too much uh in the last two days uh and even today it's trading in the green um is this a sign that maybe there's uh some stability in terms of the optimism that markets have on pick and pay uh yeah would you be picking and paying for pick and pay at this point mm. uh or going the other way look who knows? We know there's going to be extreme volatility in this ship. We saw the results. You know, maybe there's some deep value managed. I mean, this has been this has been quite frankly a catastrophe. And it was a catastrophe that was hidden from us, I suppose, for you know, other than in the last six months to a year. You know, no one knew it was that bad. I mean, they swing from a profit into a massive loss. 
they're technically insolvent because their assets are worth less than their liabilities. Mm. I mean, you would have thought this a pick and pay. So is this the bottom? I, d I don't know mm. of the share price. But if you're optimistic that Sean Summers can turn it around, you know, even their own estimates, which might be a bit optimistic, you know, they're only going to return into profitability in a few years' time. Yeah. You know, if you believe you can do it, it doesn't matter what price you pay. You can buy it now, you can buy it lower, you can buy it a bit higher. If you're right and, and the company is turned around, you know, the share will go up multiples in two or three years' time. But, of course, this is a big job. What they're doing now is the easy part. You know, rights issue, listing boxer, closing mm. stores, that's the easy part. The hard part is trying to become competitive again, especially against shop right checkers. That's the actual long slog. That's a hard part. Yeah. It's been quite interesting because somebody said to me earlier on in the week, um, I mean, there's clearly still some juice left in pick and pay. It's not like transaction capital. Um, the fact that a pick and pay can come to the market for a rights issue and uh, transaction mm. capital couldn't. So uh, quite an interesting uh, story there. And yeah, we'll be looking forward to the developments on the turnaround there. Wayne, yep. let's get to your stock pick for today. What will it be? Yeah, I'm picking a company called PDD. It's the holding company for Timu. Now, Timu oh. is taking over the market here in South Africa. It's the most downloaded app in South Africa. And if you want something, they've got it. Now, yeah. obviously, South Africa is a very small market. But, I mean, they doubled their sales in the last quarter worldwide. Only NVIDIA has done that. No other company's done that. I know the share price has been quite strong. But it's still below where it was two years ago. And I think Timu, was, I mean, I've used it. I think it's one of the most fantastic oh. websites. We have a little advantage at the moment in South Africa because not only are their prices quite competitive, but they're offering free shipping. So, you know, um, takealot.com mustn't worry about Amazon. Amazon and takealot.com must worry about Timu, especially when there's free shipping. The guys just can't compete against these prices. And I've got a few parcels. And the quality is reasonable. It's okay. It's not really? fantastic. Okay. But you're not paying fantastic prices. So why not go for PDD? You are the first person that I know that has used Timur and actually <laughs> has said uh, good things about it. I actually didn't even know that it's part of a listed company. I guess maybe that's also why she in wants to list uh, so badly, so yes. quickly. So, yeah, very, very interesting part of the market that. Thank you so much uh, for your time and just, yeah, giving us uh, new, new things, new knowledge here on this show, Wayne. Thank you for your analysis. Uh, that was FNB Waltz, Wayne McCurry.